face. Uh, when we're looking at depression, uh, and that's what we're talking about when we're attacking it head on, we under, we're understanding exactly when does it strike, what are the situations that trigger it. See, we got to look at depression as an enemy. Anything that tries to steal our joy, whether it's depression, anger, fear, anything that steals our joy is an enemy that the devil is trying to use to bring our joy and steal our joy of the Lord to, to weaken our strength. Amen. So whenever we whenever we are dealing with those spirits that are trying to steal our joy, we're attacking them head on by looking at what, how can I prevent this? Now, for example, another source of depression is a holiday season, like someone just mentioned. When you're going through a holiday season and you lost a loved one, a family member, and this is your first holiday season without that family member, like we talked about a few days before, we're saddened because we're used to them being around with us during the holiday. And it's, a, and, and it's kind of a double-edged sword because we're, we're joyful for them by the fact they've gone to be with the Lord and are no longer in pain and suffering. But at the same time, we do physically miss them because this is the first holiday without them. And you can't physically talk to them like you used to around this time of year. So that, that, that's why I say the holiday season, Thanksgiving through Christmas uh, uh, the, is the most depressing time. And you think about it, it's ironic because we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, which is supposed to be joyous, but at the same time, you're alone or you're missing the person that you normally are celebrating the holiday with. So that's the, the double-edged sword. We're, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus and all that turned into our lives, becoming our savior. But at the same time, we're missing someone physically at the same time. Uh, Sophia, See, yeah, see, the, the, the thing you want to do that many people have done uh, that helps feelings of loneliness or depression, especially during the holiday season, uh, people get involved with toy drives. They get involved with activities where you're helping others. And, of course, that doesn't still totally remove the feeling of loneliness. But one of the ways of battling loneliness is, first of all, staying in prayer and just keeping even closer communication with the Lord, it's lifting up your lifting up your feelings like we're going to do before this lesson ends. We're giving everything to the Lord, casting all our care, our depression, our fears, our negativity of any kind. We're we're casting all on the Lord for He cares for us, and so we want to say, "Take this cup from me, Lord. Take this anxiety. Take this depression. Take this fear. This negativity. The anxiety. Whatever it is." that is tormenting you, that's a negative spirit, want to give it to the Lord because he's the only one that can help us deal with it and help us make it through it. And see, it's the joy of the Lord is our strength. The reason I keep saying that particular scripture is because that is the key to what helps you make it through these tough times of feeling uh, uh, loneliness during the holiday season or, uh, or a depression of any kind. Amen. Uh, see, I want to I want also... Uh, she's not on right now, but I want to also announce uh, Golden Castle's birthday is today. So give a shout out to Golden Castle's. She uh, she told me yesterday that she uh, she found a place that she that uh, was going she be able to stay for a few days, and she said what a wonderful birthday gift, and she's praising God. And, and uh, uh, her testimony about that is actually under one of my prayers. It's not under Golden Nuggets. But we'll give a shout out to Golden Castles right now. Happy birthday. She might be on a little bit later on, but we're gonna say it right now so that it is actually on record. Praise God and and, uh, and, the, and continue. Have a blessed day in the in your face devil. Thought he's gonna give you a, a, a negative birthday and you are blessed with a, a, a good place to stay for a few days. God's favor. See, that's what I'm saying. No matter what we're going through, name of Jesus, we got to keep everything always lifted to the Lord. Uh, your car won't cost much to be fixed today. In the name of Jesus, we lift up Sister Marion's car repair right now. In the name of Jesus. That what's wrong with that car is just a screw loose, a wire that removed itself, not a major repair, Lord. Let whatever's wrong with that car, Lord, be something so minor, they might even say, that's okay, you don't even pay me. In Jesus' name, let favor fall on Sister Marion and her car repair right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Sister Sheila, your birthday too. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Sheila and Golden Castles. Happy birthday. And to all those who are listening right now, if it's your birthday as well, happy birthday to everyone within the sound of my voice who's having a birthday today. Even if you're not commenting right now, it's your birthday. Happy birthday to YouTube of Golden Castles and, and Sister, uh, Sister uh, Sheila. Uh, happy birthday, Sheila W. A happy birthday to both of you. May you have a blessed day uh, throughout the day and enjoy your day in the name of Jesus. Praise God. You have family? Uh, over there. Oh, there. Oh, well, I'm just JD's talking. Amen. I'll try to keep up with your comments here. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Just catching up on the comments right quick. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, Lord. So, some of the scriptures I just want to share. And I, I when, when the topic of uh, this topic, today's topic came up, one of the reasons depression is a stronghold is not either wanting to talk it out and also denial that you're going through it because people like to birthday thursday i mean regina don't forget to let us know uh the, the one of the biggest strongholds depression has other than us not want to admit that we're dealing with it so whenever you're dealing with any negative spirit and you and that's what's great about the fellowship because we can lift up what we what we're concerned about to the fellowship and we pray corporately for each other but when you when you keep quiet about something you're dealing with a struggle a concern a fear an anxiety and you're not talking to anybody about it that actually increases the depression because it's a stronghold that makes you want to feel like oh you're going to talk about that oh, they're going to laugh at you they're going to think you're nothing they're going to think you're weak see the devil starts whispering in your ear to keep you from feeling like sharing what you're dealing with with somebody else because sharing with someone else is what weakens the depression for one just by the fact you're talking to somebody so many so many of the school shootings on the, over the past history that uh, why well, I, I paid particularly close attention, of course, when I was teaching school, but almost every school shooting was someone who was depressed, and almost every shooting, someone who knew the person who was a shooter said, "Well, you know, I know they were going through stuff, but I, I didn't want to talk to them." Well, yeah, they said this, but I thought they were kidding. See, people give signs when you're going through something internally and that you feel you're struggling with. People give signs that they need to talk to somebody. And so many times we'll say, well, I didn't want to get involved. Or, well, I thought I thought she some, or he or she already had somebody to talk to. You know, be a, when you're being a friend to somebody, just a listener, sometimes just being a listener is saving someone's life. They don't need you to talk to them. They need you to listen. And see, we underestimate, underestimate the power of listening. And sometimes we always think we have to say something. Where many times the blessing is letting the person get out what they're dealing with, what they're struggling with. And being a good listener basically means that once they finish talking, you have a question or concern about what they just said. That mean, means you listen. If you're daydreaming while they're talking, that means you're not a good listener. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you're listening to them go through this long story and they're pouring their heart out to you and you're waiting for them to to get through talking so you can go shopping that means you're not a good listener see listening is actually a gift people don't realize listening is a gift because if you're listening you're listening to what the person's saying and now you're not listening to them but you feel their pain as they're talking to you you feel their pain you're trying to help them talk things out they're, 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 you can see the confusion in their face and I, and see, that's why they have licensed counselors and licensed therapists. See, just when you're talking to someone like that, and and even though you're not a licensed counselor, the Holy Spirit will guide you as to what to say at that moment. And most of the time, many times, I'll say, well, you know, have you considered uh, finding a Christian counselor? And I do say Christian counselor because a, a secular counselor won't even mention the Word of God. They'll just give you all these clinical responses and the word of God is in none of the list. <laughs> so, so that's why I always emphasize a Christian counselor or a Christian therapist who will not only help you talk out the problem, but help you how to understand, like we're talking right now, how to hold on to the word while you're dealing with the problem. But the, the reason you go through counseling 
other than what we're talking about, a counselor will ask you all kinds of questions to really help you break down what is at the root of this depression. Now, we talked about some of them now, uh, being lonely during the holiday season. Uh, 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 not being able to take revenge on somebody is one. See, that's why we got to uh, we gotta let forgiveness, we got to have forgiveness in our heart. Unforgiveness and don't have the ability to get somebody back who wrongs you. You can turn that on yourself and all of a sudden you're depressed because you can't make them feel the pain they made you feel. And that gives you depression because you want them to hurt back just like they hurt you. And because you can't do that, that's a source of depression. Of course, we talk about finances. One of the major things the devil does is attack your finances. Whether it's your, your paycheck gets lost, your paycheck gets stolen, people underpaid you, people lose your money, people wronged you. I mean, that's one of the major attacks on our depression is our finances because that's that's what that's why we're trying our best to hold on to to the Lord to keep our our balance in life. Amen. Now some of the scriptures I'm glad you guys make sure everybody who's sharing the scripture right now make sure you share that scripture under the archive because I always want to make sure scriptures we're mentioning during the lesson are coming up under the archive. Amen. Um uh, Oh yeah! Oh, oh yes! Definitely have someone you you can trust. Never open your heart to someone who's a gossiper, and you probably already know who that is. You know a gossiper uh, who just wants to get in your business, and next thing you know, you cried your heart out thinking it's confidential. You can trust this person, and next thing you know, everybody who doesn't need to know your business knows your business. So be careful of who you talk to, and that's many times why people try to find a counselor. If you don't have anyone you can trust, especially find a counselor or a therapist. Amen. So Erica Smith, welcome. You got on this morning. Praise God, Erica, Ohio in the house. So so that's what we're talking about with depression. Now, and as I say, as soon as you feel it coming, feel it. See, depression never blindsides you. You wake up in the morning and you, it almost always kind of starts like not feeling good today. And sometimes it's a foreboding, a heaviness on you when you wake up. Or you just, uh, you just, uh, oh, yo, test the spirit of the counselor. Amen, Sister Marion. Amen. Because remember, all counselors are not created equal. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and make sure, oh, make sure, make sure, make sure that the counselor is the same sex. A male counselor should not be ministering to a female counselor, nor vice versa. Because what happens is a dependency falls that's not even meant to fall when it's when it's opposite sex counseling. It's almost like a dependency that you're expecting in a relationship forms without even trying. Because if it's a, if it's a man really helping comfort a woman during the hard times, that comfort which would normally be provided by a husband or someone close, that can also turn into a dependency for that person and now you're looking for that person to com comfort you as a relationship where it's really the person comforting you as a counselor and so that's why in ministry when there's a long term uh when there's a long term uh counseling session is 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 best to always make sure it's the same sex person talking to you uh, and that helps avoid all that from the beginning. Amen. And that's a lot of ministries will, will automatically, when you call in and say, I'm looking for a counselor, they'll automatically make, make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, your son was molested by a male friend. Oh, was it, oh by, so a female counselor was best for him. We now, now see, that's a good point, Sir Lori. That's the case. You're right. If your son was molested by a male friend, he has no trust for men whatsoever. Yeah, so so I'm glad you mentioned that because that there, there are, there's a very specific reason for that case, and so that's why whatever whatever you find out, uh, you always want to make sure that you that you keep all the the fine points like that in mind. But Greg, you have a good workout video. Oh, praise God, praise God. You see, there's so many remedies. That, that we can help 
instead of what we always say, people always say when you're going through depression, and I hate when people say this, stop wallowing in your depression. Stop wallowing. Well, see, it's easier said than done. And say so what we're talking about right now is how do we capture the depression before it takes root? Because once it takes root, it pulls you down so low that you have no energy. You don't feel like doing anything. You can't even you don't feel like going out to the store. You just feel like laying around in bed the whole day and you feel like you have no energy because the spirit of depression has almost paralyzed you that you don't want to do anything in a day. But like, well, like a workout video was, a, was an excellent one. Uh, working out, go for a walk. See, you want to attack depression from a physical reaction. Your physicality is being depressed. So your physical your physical body is going to be the first thing that responds to depression. So you want to, if you go for a walk, even if it's just walking down the street, walk around the block, sometimes just breathing the air. And as you're walking, you just thank you, Lord. Give me deliverance to this, this situation. Help me feel better what I'm dealing with right now, Lord. And you start talking to the Lord. And thank you, Jesus, for helping me through this. Thank you, Lord. And whatever it is that you're lifting up, that you're that you're that you're going through, you're lifting it up to the Lord as you're physically taking a walk. But many are running in place. Thank, thank you, stick apart. See, physical, just like when I used to teach a class when people are trying to quit smoking, and people try to quit smoking by by uh, they'll rip the cigarette, they'll stop smoking. But a part of smoking is a hand-to-mouth fixation addiction. You're used to doing this. So people stop smoking, they replace the cigarette with donuts, coffee, cake, and start gaining weight. And then they say, well, I quit smoking and gained all this weight. It wasn't the smoking quitting that made you gain weight. It's replacing the cigarette with the wrong food. Why not carrot, apple, celery, salad? What the body wants to do is go from one drug nicotine to another drug caffeine and so what you uh, everything we're talking about with depression all this is what feeds the depression is the body wanting one thing and that's what that's where fasting and praying comes in when you're fasting and praying it's you and the spirit man telling the physical body i'm the one in charge here i know what you're craving but you're not gonna get it and so when you're fasting and praying, maybe it's three days or whatever length of time you can do it. And it doesn't have to be a, a full out fast of all just water. It can, it can be something like if you fast all day and, then, and you eat dinner, but you fast all day, you wanna make sure your body is not getting what it wants when it wants it. Because that's what you're teaching the body that, hey, you know what? I'm the one in charge. You're not telling me when to smoke a cigarette. You're not telling me when to eat. The spirit man is in charge. I'm going to tell you when we're going to do whatever we're going to do because the spirit man is in control here, not the physical man. And that's what the whole purpose of fasting and praying is for, to always remind the body that the old man is the physical man. The old man, old things have passed away. The spirit man is a new man who's in charge today. And that's what we're trying to keep teaching our body through what it, whether, it's, whether it's weight loss, cigarettes, teaching ourselves a, a new way to eat, uh, uh, the, the eating from depression That's another one we, we tend to eat more Thinking the food's going to make you feel better And next thing you know you feel worse Because now you've gained 20 pounds Because your reaction to depression Is eating And so that's why we want to focus on Physical things to do when you're depressed Whether it's walking Whether it's uh, running in place all The things that we're sharing with each other right now uh, Right now they mainly, that's what I'm saying. Spirit, that's why I say call it by name. Spirit of depression. You call it by name. The second you feel it, spirit of, I re, spirit of depression, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and cast you out of my mind, my spirit, and my home back to the pit of hell. Whatever the negative spirit is, you feel it. You know, stress eaters, Tanya. Yeah, I mean, and, and see, is is believe me, I understand that too. I'm a I'm a a, a stress muncher. <laughs> I don't go in, I don't get into serious eating when I get depressed. But I I catch myself now. You all this working out you just did, and you countering it as you sitting here munching on this stuff that you know you shouldn't be eating. And that's why I, I, I've kind of come to a point where you identify yourself as you go into stress eating. That means you can actually stop yourself. If you can identify when you slip from depressed 
regular emotion to depressed eating, then you're able to call it out. Speak out the blessings over it. Uh, so I'm, my, my comments keep disappearing over me. Come here. Come here, comments. Praise God. So let me just share some scriptures with you. Uh, I've got I've, I've got several that I had put together. Uh, Proverbs 28, 13. Proverbs 28, 13. And some of these are... Uh, are uh, <laughs> talking about that. Let me say, JD said, "What? When you're depressed, you quit eating." We well, now, you know what? I'm not making a joke. This is, uh, JD. I wish I could do that one. <laughs> See, a lot of us who are stress eaters would give anything to be stress fasters. Because <laughs> see, now of course, if you stop eating when you're stressed, that's bad for you. Because now you're depriving your body of nutrients. And now you you if you go too long without eating anything, that can be hard on your body there. But I'm just making a, a joke as far as those of us who are stress eaters, we'd give anything to be stress fasters, to, to not eat when we're depressed. But either one of them, either one of them is the body craving and reaction, a reaction to stress. See, a stress, and, and I know, I, and I use, I, I say stress fast, uh, uh, Tokyo, because it's a difference when you're fasting for the purpose of fasting. But when you're actually physically depressed and you stop eating, you're not actually coming from a spiritual mindset of fasting and praying. If you stop eating because you're stressed, that's what can lead to ulcers, high blood pressure, and the body feeding on itself. Stress feeds on your own body. That's what an ulcer is. An ulcer is someone who's gone through so much stress they're not eating, and the stress is it basically the, the the stomach acids eating up your own stomach, and that's what an ulcer is. So an ulcer is a sore caused by the stomach feeding on itself, and it's usually almost always caused by stress. And so that's why we want to keep a balance of making sure we we keep keep the word. And I love that video you put together, so JD. So that's what. I gotta say that we could never have enough videos of scriptures and soft music and ocean waves. You, like like Sister JD, she made the, I don't know if you guys saw it. She made a, a, her own a version of a of a, a relaxation meditation uh, video with uh, some scriptures and some relaxing music. And see, that's these are all examples of how when we, when the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. That's see, I've got basking in His presence which I originally put together for me, which became a blessing for other people. But every time you put a, something together for yourself, that's a blessing to you. If you upload it, I guarantee you, if you upload that video to YouTube, even though you did it as a blessing to help yourself stay peaceful, you're going to have, I don't know how many people who are going to say, I'm so glad you put this together, as if you put it together for them. Because the Lord will use anything he moves you to put together to empower your spirit, he's going to use that same video to empower others who are coming from the same mindset that you are. Amen. Be filled full of fruit, full of spirit. So the whole thing we're talking about is, is doing whatever you need. And these are all, when you make videos like, uh, like it's just JD did, or like I did with Baskin in his presence, those are ways that you're seeking to get closer to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit has given you. Amen, JD. It saved you from destruction. See, basking in his presence for me was me trying to teach myself how to pray for an hour and just enjoy the Lord for an hour. That's what it did for me. But God took that. He said, put that online because I'm going to use that prayer to bless others in different ways. And whether it's people being, some people said they were healed of insomnia, high blood pressure. And since JD just shared, see, we don't know how God wants to use whatever he asks us to do. We're thinking we're doing it for ourselves, but God's going to use it for his glory and bless many with what that assignment was originally for you. Amen. That's why it's so important to always obey the Holy Spirit, whether it's turn on your computer in the morning, say, praise God. It's such a wonderful day. I'm, I was feeling so depressed this morning, but I looked at the sun and I feel so much better. Have a blessed day. If you said something that short, I guarantee you, you'll have at least 50 people saying, man, that was meant for me. Thank you for leaving that message. I needed that because 
God doesn't tell you to say anything without having someone waiting to hear the very word that you've got to share. Uh, DS, you made a song uh, list. Oh, you made a song list. Amen, uh, uh, DS. You see, that's what we do. Uh, oh, man, oh, like a show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we we'll put the song list together. Yeah, I mean that's what that's one good thing about YouTube. You can make your own your own playlist, and like those of you I told, if you really if you really, uh, you at least hopefully you learn to pray longer through basking and, pr and praise God. That's what that was for. Just how to just sit still. This this world, which also feeds depression, this world is so much about being caught up in the rat race. And if you if you focused on the world. You try to keep him. You try to keep up here. You try to keep up there. You just constantly, like a chicken with your head cut off, running around trying to control your life. When we need it, what? Stand still. Let God help me with this. Take care of this problem because we cannot do it alone. And that's the source of so much of our stress is we cannot do it by ourselves. We got to let go and let God help us through situations because the, the minute you keep trying to do it yourself you now go start looking at the world realize you can't do it by yourself forget to ask God to help you and next thing you know you're in a, in a give up mode suicidal thoughts I can't take it no more you know and, and, and when you look at the world the world is automatically going to pull you down and that's why you keep hearing me always say, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. we got to keep our mind on the Lord and stand still like we always do at the end of worship. And just talk to the Lord. Lord, you know what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with this deadline, Lord. I need I need this amount by what? And be specific. And Lord, I need $3,000 by Friday. I have no idea how I'm going to get it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you are my provider. Bless me with favor, supernatural oil flow and abundance. Whatever, Lord, just I'm lifting this up to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the provision in Jesus' name. And now, once you lift it up, you lift up that deadline, that fear. Once you lift up to the Lord, thank you, Lord, for my breakthrough. Thank you for my supernatural deliverance. Thank you for what, whatever you lift up. Once you say it, you're thanking him for it. You're thanking him for it. That's how we call those things to be not as though they were. See, because if you, if you don't and you start wondering out, how am I going to do that? And don't even try to figure God out. How's God going to pay that bill? How's God going to provide? How's God? How's God? When you start asking questions how God's going to do it, now you're trying to figure out God. That's going to make you depressed because you can't figure out God. God's ways are what? Higher than our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. We can never even come close to understanding God's ways. Just trying to understand God's ways can cause you to be depressed because God is bigger than that. We can't even begin to figure out God's purpose, our place in God's purpose in our life. That's why Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is so, so important. Trust the Lord with all your heart and do what? Lean not to your own understanding. Lean not to your own understanding. That right there is what is the source of every form of depression. When we lean on our own understanding and cannot find answers, cannot find solutions, cannot understand the reason why, we start worrying. Here comes the stress. Here comes the depression. Here comes anxiety attacks. Because we're no longer looking at God. We're looking at the problem and trying to figure out either how we're going to do it or how God's going to do it. And we don't worry about that. God is has so many ways to solve our problem that he has multiple choice. We can't even think of one way because our limited mind can't even see one solution. God sit there going like, okay, shall I, uh, miracle A, miracle B, miracle C, miracle D. Uh, which way I want to solve this problem? Any miracle he gives us is going to solve the problem. It could be favor, supernatural overflow, uh, uh, abundance from nowhere. I mean, he's got so many ways to bless us. So when we just trust him with all our heart, with all our heart, lean not to my own understanding. What is the next part? In all your ways, acknowledge him. Know that he is a provider. He's deliverer. He's a yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. He's going to take care of all that. That's why we say, in all your ways, acknowledge him. In what? In all that he is. He is our provider. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. When you acknowledge him in all your ways, 
you're acknowledging everything he is, all the power, all the knowingness that he has, everywhere at the same time. Everything we describe God is, when you say in all your ways acknowledge him, you're acknowledging and, and praising God that he is who he says he is. And that's what Hebrews 11, 6 is all about. He is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he is. Is what? Is everything we're talking about. The way maker, the miracle worker, the healer, the deliverer. Must believe that he is. And once you believe that, he is a rewarder. Reward is what? Blessings. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added. See, they're all tied together. They're all tied together. Praise God. We 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 he makes a way when there is no way. Amen. Well, that's amen, JD. When you think there is no way, God's got the way right next to the where you think there's no way. There's an escape right next to the closed door. But if you're stressed out, you'll never see the crack that lets you out of the problem. And I said this before. And that's where that's where the, we are. The, the scripture I shared the other day. There's no uh, temptation such as common to man. And I'm paraphrasing. And God, with whatever he, whatever challenge he gives you, he'll always give you a way of escape. He will never give you a problem bigger than you can handle. And he'll never give you a problem that there's not a way out of. But you'll only find the way out if you don't panic. And that's the importance. Of why I keep going back to Exodus 14, 13, 14. Stand what? Still. Stand still. Like we're doing right now. Stand still. Even right, right now, we just stand still. Feel it. Feel it right now. This is right, just right now. Stand still. I'm gonna, I'm gonna right now while I'm on the screen. I'm gonna say stand still and for 15 seconds I want you I want you to feel how fast you're gonna feel his presence right now beginning now thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Jesus yes Lord yes Lord can you guys feel that in, in the silence. Tomiko, welcome. Did you guys feel that? When, when you stand still, you actually feel his presence is all the way around us. His presence is already here. But you gotta stand still. It's just like it's just like being in the midst of a, a chaotic moment in a meeting, and you go to the next room and the and the room is quiet. And you just take a deep breath. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As you remember, every time you say thank you, Jesus, it's not just thanking him for that moment, but thanking him for everything he's ever done to you in your life to bring you even to this day. The only reason you're even here today is because he has his hand on you. Every person within the sound of my voice, the only reason you're here today is because God's got his hand on you. Otherwise, we've been taken out of here long ago. And that's what you got to understand. It's no accident we're here today. Even, even those that God handpicked to be in this fellowship, this fellowship didn't happen by accident. God put this together. Every person in this fellowship, God selected for a reason. And we got all different levels of believers from super prayer warriors to people who are learning how to pray, who are learning how to be still, learning how to praise. But we're all here together. And the Lord called everybody to be, gave me the name to give to the fellowship, Mighty Warriors. Meaning we're not just here socializing. We're here to go out and be able to one day fulfill what Jesus told us. These signs shall follow those who believe in my name. They shall cast out demons, speak with new tongues, take up serpents. They drink anything deadly. It shall by no means hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. All of us should be able to do all those things. That's the bar that Jesus set. I read that, as I said before, I read that scripture so many times. Oh, it sounds so nice. What a great scripture. No, 
That's the bar that Jesus set that we got to keep working to achieve. And faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing by the word of God. The more you feed your spirit, the stronger your faith gets. Feed your faith, starve your doubt. Feed your spirit, starve the flesh. That's what it's all about. Everything we're talking about, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With God, all things are possible. I mean, we got so many promises that are trying to tell us that we got the word, we got the power. I give you authority to trample over all the power of the enemy. Depression and everything. We got the power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. If we let it hurt us, it's going to hurt us. See, he's given us the authority. This is the case you always hear me say. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. He's given us all these promises in the word of God. All these promises of victory, all the promises of power, the, the, the power of the name of Jesus, power of the blood of Jesus. We're walking around, like you always hear me say, it's like walking around with an AK-47 in his spirit on your back that can shoot down anything the devil throws your path, but you're not using it. You just walk around with a gun upside down and never reach for it when the devil throws in your path and never use the power that you've got to be victorious in every situation. That's the victory he's given us. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the blood of Jesus. That's who we are in Christ. And if you need a reminder, I have three Bible studies about those three topics. Uh, Bible study 45, 46, and 47. 45 is power in the name of Jesus. 46, power in the blood of Jesus. 47, who we are in Christ. And that's the one thing the devil never wants us to discover who we are in Christ. And that's the only time the devil prays. I pray they don't ever understand they got victory over me. I pray they, that's, that's, the devil, that's how the devil prays. He's praying that we don't understand that we have victory over whatever he throws in our path. And that's why the, the Lord had me do most of the golden nuggets and at home with the word, just to let us understand how to apply the word of God to our lives because that's what's being attacked our lives we can read the Bible love the sound of it but if you don't know how to apply it to your life it just sounds good and you're not walking in any victory because you're not applying it to your life we we go through the word we realize the power we have in the word and then we use the word and knock the devil upside his head whenever he tries to put something on us amen praise God so so that's why I'm so thankful for this fellowship because we've got iron sharpens iron as you always hear and by fellowship every day we're praying for each other of every day we we'll lift each other up in prayer we're sharing the word of god and we're coming to a place of fellowship together to empower each other so that one day all of us have the same weapons the same tools all of us are mighty warriors. There is no weak link in the chain, uh, in, in, in the fence, because we're sh iron is sharpening iron. Each one of us will be walking in the power, the full power that we, the Lord has set as our goal to reach. Amen. Already defeated works of the enemy. That's right. Yeah, right, says Justine. Devil got to read the memo. He lost. Hello. <laughs> in your face. You already lost the battle, devil. So I don't know why you try to just sit here and deceive and lie and try to get us to take our eyes off the Lord because he knows he lost the battle. And that's why he's trying to hit us with depression, depression to take our eyes off the Lord. And like I was, I was lifting up Sister Nancy to continue to be strong in a situation where, where the depression is caused by others in a work environment that you have no control over, that's a, that's a form of depression. We have to pray for deliverance of that facility and everyone who works in that facility in the name of Jesus Lord touch Sister Nancy and the facility that she's in right now touch every worker that's being negligent every worker that's not doing their job they may improve her conditions in the name of Jesus we lift up that facility and every other facility whether it's a senior citizen home people who have needs Lord lift up every facility that is not operating in full capacity taking care of the needs of those who need care in the name of Jesus. We pray corporately as a fellowship. Amen and amen. See, 
those those are the types of depression when someone else is causing the depression you got to hold on to the lord even more see when we're causing our own depression that's us not uh, us letting listen to the devil's lies looking at the devil instead of the world uh, looking at the world instead of the lord see when we're when we're self-imposed depression that's one thing but when someone outside is the reason you're depressed that's when we got to rebuke that as well and and that's almost like that's almost like when you're sitting at an interrogation table and the devil is trying to throw negativity in your ear and that negativity represents the other person who's outside your life causing depression and you just keep saying the same thing i'm a child of god nothing should by any means hurt me don't you know you're going to i'm a child of god nothing should by any means hurt me blah, 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 blah. i'm a child of god nothing should by any means hurt me the negativity is just talking in your ear i'm a child of god and nothing should by any means hurt me you you have to say that 10 million times to shut the devil up guess what i'm a child of god and nothing should by any means hurt me in your face Whew. jesus help me jesus thank you lord praise god so that's that's just, that's what this is about and uh uh here's one of the scriptures uh psalm 42 5 and 6 oh uh, why are you downcast O my soul why so disturbed within me put your hope in god for i will yet praise him my savior and my lord as psalm 42 5 and 6 and then you got uh psalm 28 13 i forgot to read he who conceals his sins does not prosper but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy sometimes i was just ministering to a gentleman the other day who who was so and, and this was i never usually work on sunday night and i actually went out for a few hours last night to, to drive and i took a break at a jack-in-the-box and ran into another gentleman who was on a break at a jack-in-the-box and the word, he, he was struggling with a, a stronghold. And the word that the Lord had me share for him was what he needed to hear. But now, he never usually took a break at the Jack in the Box. And I never usually work on Sunday night. Yet, I those two things happened so that he could hear the word the Lord had for me to give him. You see, nothing happens by, nothing happens by accident. So, but what his stronghold was keeping quiet that's what proverbs 13, uh, 28 13 is about he who conceals his sin he had a sin that he was concealing because he didn't know who to talk to about it he had a stronghold struggling not knowing how to how to how to confess his sin and, and how do i get control over it and in the spirit of lust is what it was spirit of lust so the lord sends him someone who's been victorious over the spirit of lust through the word of god to share with him and see, he was a man of God struggling in the same area the way I was years ago. And so I got to share with him in terms of how uh, my, my Bible study, uh, Bible study 19 and 20, control your mind and you will control all sin. Control your mind and you will control all sin. There's Bible study 19 and 20. Because these sin doesn't come on by surprise. You got to think about it. You know it's right or wrong. Should I do this? Should I not do this? This is a sin, but oh, I can't help it. I got to do it. You remember the old show of uh, Flip Wilson years ago? The devil made me do it. The devil didn't make you do anything. You thought about it. You decided to sin, and you did it. So when the closer you get to God, the Holy Spirit convicts you more. So when you're about to sin, the Holy Spirit is talking to you. Should you really be doing this? Uh, you're with the wrong person. See, the Holy Spirit... When you're in the wrong place with the wrong person about to do the wrong thing and you're staying close to your relationship with the Lord, the Holy Spirit is going to almost shout to you, get out of there. Don't do that. Amen. Oh, Golden Castle's here. Well, happy birthday, Golden Castle's. We, we, we wish you happy birthday earlier because I wasn't sure if you're going to be, uh, be there. Praise God. Praise God. Pray for your daughter who's suffering from fibroids. And they will lift up Sister Billy's daughter right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Uh, that's what, JD, I just said that. The devil made me do it. <laughs> that who, that's who I was imitating. The devil made me do it. This is Flip Wilson. And he was always dressed up like a woman, uh, Sister Geraldine, saying he was acting all feisty. 
And the devil made me do it. The devil don't make you do anything. Amen. Amen. Praise God for the sister Golden Castle's victory. Golden Castle's, I need, uh, please, uh, all of you, I should have everyone's email address. Uh, oh, there's a different guy, JD. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, that probably was the guy who was on his show that was actually one of the regulars. I have the I have the Google uh, old Flip Wilson, but uh, but what I was just sharing with uh, was it, it make sure that that uh, it's not just Golden Castles, but many of you have already sent me your email address. But if you have not sent me your email address, if you could put your email address under the under the uh, archive, I'm trying to put together our directory for the year. Cause we like to send out little stuff at the end of the year to all the members but uh, there's almost maybe two-thirds of you i only have your youtube name and not your email address so if you have not sent me your email address please make sure you please uh uh send that as well amen praise god this is david dean praise god i received this is david dean and finally god, i hope you guys <laughs> flip and i lived acting like him you loved acting like him <laughs> amen but see, we look back now, saved, to Flip Wilson, and and now we look about how we're, we're dealing with sin and not falling into sin, and that's what his comment, "The devil made me do it," was all about. The devil made him sin. He was he was acting like a woman. Sister Geraldine was this feisty woman who just always was after men, and he always would say, uh, "The devil made me do it." But like I was just saying, as the word says. Once it is entertained, see, sin. Uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing that script. My favorite one. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see if I can find that scripture. Because see, is once scripture, uh, once once a sin is entertained. See, lustful thoughts go through your mind all the time. It's in television. It's in music videos. Almost every TV show now has somebody in bed. They even got su sexually suggestive stuff in animated cartoons now to entertain the babysitter. So lust of the flesh is all around us. So the way we got to combat that, see, is not entertain it. We know what we need to not watch that can possibly pull your thoughts the wrong way. If, if lust is a problem, you should not be watching the show that has a lot of sex in it because if lust is a problem you have in the world, the last thing you should be watching is a TV show or movie that has lots of sex because now that's going to activate what you're trying to avoid. So whatever it is that you're trying to keep under control, you, you got to protect your eye gate from watching something that is about what you're trying to avoid because now that weakens your defense amen praise god so that's a, that's what i'm just sharing I'll, and I'll share more scriptures uh on the description when i put the video archive up uh those are just a few i have a bunch of scriptures that are all kinds of depression responses and i just want to share th everything i share with you today about how, how we have victory over depression depression is one of the biggest strongholds depression and depression that leads to mental illness and mental illness by itself the, the devil is attacking our emotions and our mind all with the purpose of stealing our joy because if he can get our joy he's got our strength he gets our strength that's when you want to give up because he's taking your joy so the key to not feeling like you want to give up is to protect your joy at all co all costs and how you protect your joy keep praising him keep thanking him praise god anyhow play our favorite songs play your favorite praise video i got a whole shout song playlist of, of about 10 church ser services where people just praising crazy and they're running through the church shouting and sometimes when i'm driving i just put that whole praise tape on i'll be shaking the car and next thing you know i'm rocking in it i start off kind of feeling down i put that praise tape on praise is infectious you can't stay negative in an atmosphere of praise that's why if you're feeling negativity and depression coming on put on a praise tape and start shouting to the lord and guess what next thing you know depression is gone resist the devil and he will flee. Depression is of the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee. Put your own praise tape together. Playlist of people just praising, stupid praise, shouting, dancing, rocking, whatever they're doing. Put a playlist together. I guarantee you, you put that on next time you're depressed. 
depression will go way, way, way from your window. He said, I got to get out of here. This person is praising too much. Let me leave. And that's exactly what we want you to do, depression. Spirit of depression, go way, way, way from my window. You ain't getting nothing here. We are children of God, and nothing shall by any means hurt us or steal our joy in any way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Snakes, snakes in the dreams means lies. Praise God, says Justin. Yeah, the, the dreams, oh yeah, that's that's a whole nother lesson. Cause we of uh, Brother Gregory, uh, uh, way back, we we're trying to break down some dreams and and dreams, dreams sometimes are foreboding, sometimes dreams are warnings, sometimes dreams have different symbol meanings. So I'm glad you shared this, says Justin. You have to actually break down your dreams to understand which dream is it. Is it warning? Is it confirmation? Is it something you need to, the Holy Spirit kind of letting you understand? You're seeing the real person in your dream who's deceiving you in person. So see, dreams cannot be taken lightly because dreams is another way the Holy Spirit can communicate with us as well. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for another great lesson, Lord, on attacking depression head on, Lord, knowing the depression has no hold on us unless we let it. And we commit from this day forward, Lord, that whenever we feel the spirit of depression, we're going to go straight into praise and praise you for the victory over it. Because you did not create a spirit of fear. You did not create a spirit of depression. You did not create a spirit of anxiety. Lord, you did not create any of the spirits that come from fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind, Lord. And we claim our victory over every form of depression, anxiety, and fear that exists, Lord, name to unnamed. We claim our victory over it right now in the name of Jesus. And we praise you and thank you for it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Stick about. Praise your way through it. Can nothing steal your joy unless you let it. And when you go into praise mode, huh, praise God. No way. No way. Go way, way, way from my window. And right now, someone's been watching the past hour at this lesson who is depressed and if you've been, if you've been watching and you first came on this channel and you're feeling like the you're alone uh, by yourself and remember loneliness is tied to depression and that's the same kind of stronghold the the loneliness is making you look at your physicality to not only make you feel physically alone to make you also think you are spiritually alone. And that's the lie. That's the lie. Oh, amen. Amen, Sister Sharon. An app called Shut Up Devil. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, Shut Up Devil app. You share that. Don't forget to share that, Sister Sharon, about the name of that app. Praise God. So these are, the whole thing is always remember you're never alone. And that's the lie of the devil to make you feel like you're physically alone. And what makes you want to give up is feeling that God has even given up on you. God never gives up on you. And that he's, he's in the midst of every single thing you're going through. He's right there with you, waiting for you to just talk to him and give him it. Lord, take this cup from me. I'm struggling, Lord. Help me right now. Give me strength to make it through. Give me strength to make it through in the name of Jesus. And then all of a sudden, while you stay still, you're asking him for deliverance. He'll give you revelations. He'll give you favor. He'll give you connections out of nowhere. His blessings will come to help you walk through that you think is unwalkable. Amen. And if you're watching right now and you feel that kind of depression, but you don't know the Lord, the Lord brought you here for a reason, to receive him as your Lord and Savior so he can bring some peace into your spirit. Amen. So if you're watching right now and you feel that kind of depression in your spirit, and you, and you don't know the Lord, say this prayer with me right now. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting it up to you first. In Jesus' name I pray. And also say this as well. Say this also. Holy Spirit, come into my life right now. Teach me. Touch me. Guide me. Deliver me. And convict me of anything I'm doing wrong that is not in your will. 
that I may correct it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Giving it to the Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. That you may be a blessing to everyone you touch. A blessing to everyone you pray over or lay hands on. A blessing to everyone you, pay, or you pass by and bless without even opening your mouth. Because the love and light of the Lord is emanating from you 24-7. Praise God. I bind every spirit of retribution, revenge, and retaliation from coming against anyone in this fellowship, from coming against any family member of anyone in this fellowship, for their participation in this fellowship, Lord. Protect every fellowship member and family member, and I bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation, and every other demonic spirit, and cast you all back to the pit of hell from whence they came, in Jesus' name. And Lord, as each bubble we see on the screen, Lord, represents every prayer request that's gone up this past hour and a half, Lord. We, we pray, we believe, we have received it. And we commit to thanking you for it. No matter when it's coming, Lord, we believe we've received it and we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our miracles. Thank you for our breakthrough. Father God, loose unspeakable joy into all those listening. Peace beyond understanding restoration in every area of our lives reconciliation of marriages and family disputes family division healing in every aspect of every relationship supernatural healing over every infirmity lord by your stripes we are healed and we speak that every single day knowing that in due season ha thank you jesus our healing shall come to pass in the name of jesus hallelujah we keep speaking life into every area of our life, Lord. We commit to speaking life into every area, over every dead situation, every negative situation. We're going to speak life, Lord. There's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, O oh Lord.